we'll go ahead and put things back where they were. We're in course mode. We'll scale it up or down. Get the signal a little bit larger so we can work with it. And we'll go back to page one of the channel one menu and then turn off the channel one menu. At this point, let's talk about triggering for a moment. Our trigger menu has several choices right now. We're in auto sweep. What that means is the sweep triggers every so many milliseconds, no matter what you do. It's going to always trigger. And we have choices here. Our choices are normal, which means it'll trigger. It'll run a sweep every time it sees a signal. And we have the single mode. The single mode means that it, when it gets triggered, it make one sweep and stop and leave that sweep on the screen. So they're, they're useful in different ways, different scenarios. Most people leave the oscilloscope in the auto mode unless you purposely want to look at a single sweep. We'll put it in normal mode and select normal mode. Now we're going to play with the trigger level. So the trigger level knob here, if we bring the trigger down, I don't know where the trigger is, let me find it. Okay, here's our trigger. When you start to turn the trigger level knob, the trigger line appears. That's this orange line, it's T over here on the left side. So we're going to take the trigger up to the point where we're no longer within uh, the signal envelope. Okay, as we bring the trigger level up, you notice that as we get close to the top of the signal, the noise riding on the signal actually causes trigger instability. See our triggers, are, it's moving back and forth, it's not locked on very well. Notice up here at the top of the scope there's a T comma D, that means it's triggered. The signal is being triggered when our sweep mode is normal. We're triggered on an edge, we're triggered on a rising edge. So I'm going to adjust the trigger level now. And there's our trigger level and I'm going to take it up above the signal. As we approach the signal it gets jittery, got some noise on the top edge of the signal. And once we pass the signal, Notice up here this changed the weight. That means the scope's waiting for another trigger. It's showing the last waveform it captured on the last trigger, and now it's just waiting for another trigger. If we hit run, it won't matter because there's no triggers. It's waiting for a trigger. So in this particular case, we've set the trigger level higher than the signal, therefore we don't get anything except the normal sweep of the last thing we captured. If we change the sweep to auto, and select auto, we hit run again. Notice we have the signal setting there out of sync. It's jumping all over because it can't find a sync pulse because the trigger level of the sync, which is right here, is higher than the signal. So auto is going to run the thing randomly, give you waveform just the same, even though it's not of much value. So remember, if you are in normal mode, get this thing set back to normal mode. then what you see is the last waveform that was captured with the last trigger and you see a wait sign saying look I'm waiting for a trigger there's no trigger present I can't do anything so always make sure your trigger level is adequate for the mode you've selected we'll crank the trigger level back down a little bit and as soon as it comes within range you notice we go back to now it's being triggered again but the trigger level is right there where the noise is if you see the trigger level the orange line right up there in the noise on top of the signal. If you come down the signal a little bit, get away from the noise, it's riding on the signal. Then you get a very stable synch synchronized 
display. And notice that the trigger time is right here. We're looking at this transition. As we said earlier, we can go down here to the expanded mode, or they call it delayed mode, and look at the rising edge of that signal, expand it out. Notice we'll see that it's very rounded. Notice we're looking at a very small segment of that signal right now in the expanded mode. Bring it back just a little bit. So it's definitely not a nice clean square wave. Not when you get down to two microseconds per division. Now up here to 100 microseconds per division, which is up here, two microseconds is down here. But at 100, it looks like a square wave. But at 200, two microseconds, it definitely does not look like a square wave. So it does have a rounded leading edge. And we discussed that in lesson number two. So I just want to point out those issues so you can see what's happening. We'll turn off the expanded mode. So now you've seen what happens in normal and automatic sweeps. When the, you have a trigger, you don't have a trigger. So always pay attention to the top of your screen. It's going to tell you when you've lost your trigger. And that's why, see, if you don't know that, if you're looking at this nice stable square wave, you think, oh, that's a nice square wave. When in fact, if we go up here and change our trigger level, above it, just repeating what we did before. So you think it's triggered right now when it really isn't because it says it's weight. That's how you know it's not. It says weight. In normal mode, it says weight. And you can slide it, you can position it around left or right. And you can center it back. But you're looking at a false entity. You're looking at the last sweep that it captured, the last trigger acquisition that it captured. Once you get into this situation, down here we have a 50% trigger level. We can click the 50% trigger level, and nothing happened. It didn't click. Okay, the scope didn't take it. That time it took it. What I've discovered through experience is that the oscilloscope goes to sleep if there's so many, so much time duration with no no uh, commands. So the first command you send, when I clicked the 50% the first time, it just woke up the oscilloscope. It took the second click to actually get the 50% to take place like it did. So now we have a triggered scope again. And I want to show you what happens with the force button. Let's go ahead and uh, by pressing the trigger knob, the trigger level knob, Take a quick look at it. Trigger level knob right here. By pushing in on the trigger level knob, it provides a function, and the function just happens to be to zero the trigger level to zero volts. So let's do that. And notice now the trigger level is at zero volts. So I'll bounce it down a couple, a couple millivolts below, and now I notice we have a weight status. We've lost our trigger once again. If you've lost your trigger and you want to do a quick check and not disturb your trigger levels, you can do a force command. What this does, it doesn't force a trigger. What it does, it forces an acquisition. acquisition. It forces the scope to try to find a trigger. So when I push this, it goes out, to the, it goes back to triggered mode again. It does an ac acquisition, but does not find a trigger. Therefore, he displays the acquired signal that was found without a trigger and goes back to waiting for a trigger again because now we're back in the triggered mode waiting for a trigger. So the force button forces an acquisition. In other words, the scope goes out there and looks to see what's out there. And if it were to find a trigger then it would trigger the signal and keep going. If it doesn't it still waits because it's still waiting for a normal sweep which requires a trigger.